Indigenous sacred places are under attack throughout the United States. Conflict brought about by recreational activities, technological innovation, animal agriculture, Western scientific exploration, and suburban development are all responsible. Desecration occurred recently at Standing Rock, at Bears Ears, and at Mauna Kea. Battles in Indian country to protect drinking water and sacred land from the Dakota Access Pipeline, ranching and mineral extraction at national monuments and on other public lands, and profit-driven environmental alterations show that no one knows when threats will arise. Artist and author Lauren Rennes' recent book, Oak Flat, about a sacred and ecologically unique place by the same name that has been used by Western Apaches forever for puberty, uh, girls' puberty rights ceremonies, for acorn collection, and for other holy activities is at the heart of this review. My name is Joel Halfrich. I'm a local historian. I teach at a number of local colleges and universities. I became involved in the struggle for to protect Oak Flat uh, about what we'll be talking today um, more than a decade ago. As a graduate student at the University of Minnesota, I was introduced in 2001 to a number of Apaches, Western Apaches in particular, and environmentalists at the center of Lauren Rednes' book. Today I want to discuss her recent book, Oak Flat, A Fight for Sacred Land in the American West. And in order to do that, I want to put forward five outline points. I will first talk about my involvement uh, with this place. I will discuss the background or some background regarding Oak Flat. I will provide an introduction to the author, Lauren Redness, as well as some of her previous books. And spoiler alert, I will provide a, a favorable review of this book at that point. I will then uh, provide a few closing points about what is uh, what you can do um, and um, suggesting kind of where are we now with this issue and, and what's possible. So how I became involved in the fight for Oak Flat, again, at the center and heart of Lauren Rendis' recent book. In 2001, I was studying African-American history at the University of Minnesota when I was invited to a community event. There I met two activists from Arizona who had come up uh, to Minnesota to educate people about a planned astrophysical development um, on a sacred mountain, Mount Graham, uh, in Arizona. I could not believe what I had heard about the actions of the University of Arizona and its research partners, most particularly the Vatican, uh, but also Notre Dame, Ohio State, uh, Germany's Max Planck Institute, and also um, Italy's Arcetri uh, Observatory, as well as the efforts of people like John McCain um, to consign Mount Graham to these uh, institutions. The University of Arizona at the time was courting both the University of Virginia and the University of Minnesota to join their telescope project. And despite tremendous protests in October of 2002 um, on Indigenous Peoples Day of all things, otherwise known as Columbus Day, Minnesota joined the project. Soon after, I changed my dissertation topic completely to focus on Apache struggles for Mount Graham, uh, a sacred and ec ecologically unique mountain in Arizona. So uh, uh, Apache struggles for Mount Graham and Oak Flat are connected. Uh, after the University of Minnesota joined this project, I stayed in contact with the Apaches environmentalists at the center of the struggle for Mount Graham. In December of uh, 2014, after years of trying to pass legislation that would give a place called Oak Flat, which was a holy place, another holy and sacred place to Western Apaches um, and also other Indians in Arizona. Uh, after years of trying to pass legislation that would give that land at Oak Flat to an international, uh, two international uh, mining corporations, Rio Tinto and BHP, some of the largest mining companies in the world, um, and the hope was that these companies would establish a huge copper mining operation. And in fact, they would create the world, uh, North America's largest copper mine. 
So after failed attempts over numerous years to make that happen, Senator McCain, along with Jeff Flake and also uh, representatives like uh, Paul Gosar of Arizona, they snuck a rider, uh, otherwise known as an additional appropriation, uh, into a must-pass National Defense Authorization Act bill um, to give this land at Oak Flat to these mining companies uh, in exchange for other lands in Arizona of marginal value. Um, the, the bill obviously passed and was signed into law, um, and um, uh, the, the promise was that, as part of the legislation, that once a final imp environmental impact statement was complete, uh, within 60 days, the land at Oak Flat could be given to Rio Tinto and BHP, which had created a new company called Resolution Copper. Again, this, the, the, the mine that we're talking about is massive. It would be about two miles across and at least a, a thousand feet likely deep or more. So while Mount Graham is an ecological wonder with more biological life zones than any other solitary mountain in, our, in the world or in uh, North America, um, is also home to the imperil, a number of imperiled species endemic to this place only. Uh, that have survived for as many as 11 or 12,000 plus years, including the Mount Graham Red Squirrel, uh, the most one of the most imperiled mammals on planet Earth. Oak Flat, on the other hand, is an ancient grove linked to an oasis riparian corridor, rich with archaeological evidence of occupation by Apaches and other Native Americans. In fact, um, some archaeologists have said this is the uh, most impressive set of archaeological um, evidence anywhere in, in Arizona. On March 4th, 2016, the National Park Service listed Oak Flat uh, as, historic, as, as a historic district and traditional cultural property, a TCP, on the National Register of Historic Places. Mount Graham had uh, been formally determined as eligible in, uh, as a tr traditional cultural property in 2002. Both actions by the U.S. government in these cases are proof of Apache's deep connections to these places. The San Carlos Apache tribe, uh, one of the Western Apache tribes, applauded the recognition that tribal sacred lands deserve the utmost protection and preservation. The San Carlos Apache tribe actively and successfully opposed the mine until last minute inclusion of this authorizing legislation in the 2015 NDAA. In an action Apaches see as cowardly stab in the back, Congress gifted Oak Flat to a foreign-owned mining conglomerate intent on resource extraction at the sacred landscape. Some of the same politicians, in this case at Oak Flat, had attached Mount Graham as a rider to a must-pass appropriations bill in 1988, effectively granting astronomers privileged rights to alter that mountain landscape. Mount Graham, in other words, uh, and Oak Flat are are um, two sides of the same coin. So how do we get here? Well, uh, let me talk briefly about Lauren Redness. Uh, she is a 2016 MacArthur Genius a Grant recipient. She currently teaches illustration at the New School in New York City. Her previous books include an awesome and visually breathtaking book about Mary Curie the uh, pioneering physicist and chemist, uh, along with her husband, Pierre Curie, the, the uh, physicist, um, which was recently turned into a movie. Uh, you can only rent, you can not only rent the film, but you can also watch a, a pretty interesting TEDx East talk by Lauren Redness about this book. Um, and I, I encourage you to do so. Lauren's written a number of other books as well, including a, uh, another book of visual nonfiction about the weather, which is really exciting. Uh, that book is titled Thunder and Lightning. And I would guarantee that will leave you uh, definitely thinking more about not only the weather, but also about the weather used as a metaphor. In particular, I'm thinking about uh, the term fog, you know, how fog is, is both a reality an actual weather phenomenon, um, and also um, a metaphor for any number of things. 
Uh, you'll never look at the weather uh, in a, a, um, you, you'll, you'll look at weather in a different light as a result of this book. Lauren began writing Oak Flat, uh, this book here, uh, after reading a 2015 uh, New York Times article about the National Defense Authorization Act and the Oak Flat provisions in that act. She wanted to know more about the crisis and she dove into research and writing Oak Flat, a book that is, um, the, bo the book that is, is the result. I was unfortunate enough because of my own writings and research on Mount Graham and to an extent Oak Flat um, to receive a, um, a call from uh, Lauren a number of years ago and um, I tried to help her as best I could by putting her into contact with certain people that I knew um, so that she could write um, about Oak Flat and also in a chapter about Mount Graham, uh, chapter 8 I believe. So as, any, as far as any formal kind of a book review, here's what I'll say about Lauren Redis's Oak Flat. Lauren Redis is a talented artist, writer, and researcher. She is a, she's gifted us with a beautiful and gripping, and I would say ethereal work filled with deep meaning. Her book is well documented with interviews and secondary source material with which it is difficult to argue. Although she does not pick a side in her book, uh, she leaves her sources, including several generations of Apaches and white residents of the nearby town of uh, Superior, Arizona, to carry the bulk of the story's framework. It is clear that, like all of us, that she has an opinion and indeed a perspective, uh, a distinct point of view in this case. Hers is a work of truly creative nonfiction, a visually stirring masterpiece that is characterized by as visual nonfiction by many but for me is literally uncategorizable. Unlike her previous books, she did not create her own typeface, which is kind of cool. Um, she did not do that here. Um, and she's employed a greater use, I would say, of her own form of investigative journalism, what a number of people have actually referred to as visual journalism. As she has stated elsewhere, I work, quote, more or less like any reporter would, I'm talking to people, I'm gathering information, close quote. She collects and creates her research materials, taking photographs and drawing, in fact, drawing always um, on location. So she traveled to Oak Flat repeatedly for this work. Her curiosity is infectious. Um, she often begins new projects to learn about a person or an event or a place. From her powerful descriptions about the origins of copper in the beginnings of the book, to the recent histories of the struggles for sacredly, sacred and ecologically unique Apache places such as Oak Flat, and again in one chapter about Mount Graham, Redness dives deeply into both 19th and 21st century history. A reader gets a deep sense of place and environmental consciousness from reading her book. The animals, plants, rocks, desert landscapes, in fact, the, the Apaches themselves, who have viewed this place since time immemorial as sacred, uh, come to life. Um, we get to know them. We get to meet them um, as she draws and writes um, in the book. And I can attest to that, um, having met a number of the people whom she, with whom she describes and, and uses their words, um, that her book is hyper real in the sense that um, and in terms of realistic detail, it's a hyper real work. Um, she's captured the essence of these places and also of the people who care about these places. Extremely incredible. It's unlike uh, any other book I've ever read before. I recommend that everyone interested in the ongoing social justice issues uh, like this that have not received enough, enough attention and yet is just as significant as some of the other places I mentioned where we're seeing, in some cases, ongoing sacred place struggles, such as at Standing Rock and at Mauna Kea and at Bears Ears, should buy this book. I would also argue that it should be given to any single child um, as a gift, as it can be used to show what is possible when creativity and compassion are driving forces in the presentation of complex stories. 
Although this book is often on the bestseller lists on Amazon and elsewhere, under headings such as comics and graphic novels, as well as within categories such as education and nonfiction graphic novels. The reality is that, as I mentioned before, Oak Flat is truly in a category all its own. In fact, Lauren Redis's work is impossible to categorize. Her book is stunning art, outstanding story storytelling, and superb investigative journalism. If you buy this book, I guarantee it will not only be one of the most beautiful books that you've read, but also one of the most powerful. And it looks great on a bookshelf. Again, I, I hold up uh, the spine of this book. Um, it, it's just incredible uh, work of art. So what's happened since uh, last year when the, the book came into print? Uh, and how do you get involved? which I think are important questions to ask. Um, and even though this is a book about uh, a review about a book, um, it's also about an important social justice issue that's ongoing, getting played out in the present. So if let's say you were to buy this book and, and want to do something, um, maybe I can kind of share some, some thoughts about that as well. In January, 2021 this year, just year, just days before Joe Biden was inaugurated as the current president of the United States, three lawsuits were brought against the United States government to halt the release of a final environmental impact statement regarding the proposed copper mine and to stop the transfer of acres of national forested land. In fact, Oak Flat sits in a national forest um, to Resolution Copper. The first lawsuit deals quite convincingly that transferring Oak Flat violates several laws, including the Re Religious uh, Freedom Restoration Act, uh, and fails to honor Apache rights to Oak Flat under the 1852 Treaty of Santa Fe between the Apaches and the U.S. government. Again, the laws of claims include those Apache rights to the land under that treaty, a breach of trust, violations of the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, and the First Amendment right to religious freedom, and other constitutional claims under the First Amendment, such as the right to petition and redress of grievances, and also the Fifth Amendment due process. The National Congress of American Indians, representing more than 550 federally recognized tribes and tribal governments, dozens of federal Indian law and religious liberty legal scholars, several nonprofits, the Jewish Coalition for Religious Liberty, and also the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints have all joined that lawsuit in support of those Apache claims. As those cases and their appeals were making their way through the courts, the U.S. government at the 11th hour rescinded the final environmental impact statement in order to study the issue further and address comments made by both about both the inadequacy of the document's findings and its rushed publication by the previous administration. The cases move forward nonetheless. In March, the Save Oak Flat Act was introduced to Congress uh, by Representative, uh, Representative Grijalva and also Senator Sanders. Uh, the legislation would repeal the Oak Flat Act that intends to give away Oak Flat to Resolution Copper and the land exchange. I encourage everyone who's watching this to read the book. I would encourage you to call your representatives uh, once you do. Uh, to educate yourselves about the issues. And if you want to get updates regarding uh, Oak Flat, I would encourage you to follow the nonprofit Apache-led group Apache Stronghold on social media and pay close attention to the ongoing national and international news coverages, coverage about Oak Flat. Uh, this is truly an ongoing story uh, getting played out in the present and it is, it is possible uh, to, uh, to change course, and, and maybe Apaches can do it with your help. If you want to know more about Oak Flat or Mount Graham, which is also another ongoing issue, uh, feel free to contact me. My email address is jh002d as in David at hotmail.com. Again, jh002d as in David at hotmail.com. And I really appreciate your uh, taking the time to listen to me, and uh, peace to everyone. Thank you.